Hi everyone, this is Sue, and this work is in collaboration with Sarthak Chandra, who's also here, and also Ilafi. Um, so today I'm gonna be telling you about a memory model that, similar to humans, shows a gradual forgetting uh, as you're trying to store more and more memories into this network, rather than showing a catastrophic drop. So any memory model should exhibit a memory continuum. And what do I mean by a memory continuum? Any network has an upper bound on the total information you can store in that network, and that's given by the total number of synapses in the network. And so ideally, a memory model should be able to store few memories with complete recovery of all memory states. And as you're storing more memories or patterns into this network, you should have gradual degradation of information that you can recover uh, from this network up to a large number of patterns which still lead to partial recovery. So the key is that the memories should only be gradually forgotten and that all stored memories should be recovered, uh, although with less accuracy per memory. So the problem is that the current content addressable memory models lack a memory continuum. So for instance, a Hockfield network um, has an upper bound uh, on the number of patterns you can store in it. And once you cross that critical capacity, it shows a catastrophic forgetting where it forgets all previous memories. Similarly, most existing models also just form points on this memory continuum. And what we want ideally is a memory model that without any changes in its architecture, uh, spans this entire continuum from complete recovery of few memory states to partial recovery of many memory states. And for the first time, we present a model that is able to achieve this memory continuum. So this is uh, a model called memory scaffold with hetero association or mesh. The key feature in mesh is that it separates the input features from memory. So it has two key components, a memory scaffold and a hetero association component. You can think of the memory scaffold as an underlying attractor manifold that has a set of predefined attractor points. And these predefined attractor points are uh, dynamically stabilized by this two-layer uh, neural network. Um, the total number of attractor points here is given by NL choose K, where NL is the dimensionality of the label layer, and K is the number of on bits in the label layer. So the total number of states possible is NL choose K, which uh, scales exponentially in the number of label neurons in the network. So given these exponentially uh, large predefined fixed points, we can now store arbitrary features into this network by, arbitrary, by, by taking these arbitrary features and tagging them to these uh, predefined states by heteroassociation. So here we use pseudo-inverse learning for heteroassociation, but you can think that if I wanted to remember, for instance, my dad's shirt, I would just take that shirt and tag it to one of the predefined points on the scaffold. And similarly, if I wanted to remember someone I met at ICML, I would take that memory and tag to another point on the scaffold, and so on and so forth. So it turns out that mesh exhibits a near optimal content addressable memory continuum. So if you try to store up to NH memories in this network, where NH is the dimensionality of the hidden layer, then it completely recovers, uh, perfectly recovers all these NH memory states. And once you try to store more than NH memories, then it shows this gradual degradation in the information that you can recover per memory. And this is still upper bounded by the theoretical upper bounds given by the total number of synapses in the network. So again, mesh leads to complete recovery of up to NH memories. It leads to partial recovery when you try to store memories greater than NH. And ultimately, it leads to gradual uh, degradation of information per memory as you are increasingly storing large number of states uh, in the network. So how does mesh compare to existing architectures? So it turns out that in most existing uh, memory architectures, when you try to store more information per synapse, uh, your information that you could recover per synapse actually goes down to zero. However, with mesh, you actually approach a, a, a symptotically approach a constant amount of information per synapse. So given a network of fixed size, the total information in mesh is invariant to the number of stored patterns. And this kind of implies a smooth trade-off between the total number of patterns that you can store in mesh and pattern richness. Mesh also works very well with continuous valued patterns, and we can uh, predict what the uh, gradation uh, should be theoretically. And it turns out that numerics match th the theory very well, and you can look at the analytics and uh, theory in the paper. We can also look at mesh as an instance of an autoencoder with constraint activations and uh, the weights trained through biologically plausible learning rules as opposed to backpropagation. And we compare this uh, to autoencoder, to a tail biting autoencoder, which can also be seen as a memory device. And we find that as you increase the number of patterns that you're storing in mesh, here we store uh, shirts from the fashion MNIST data set, you see that there's a gradual degradation in information such that you can still uh, figure out which shirt this was, whereas in an autoencoder, you actually have this catastrophic forgetting. And we see the same thing numerically. 
So to conclude, a mesh is a biologically plausible associative memory model, which shows this memory continuum rather than a memory cliff. And it actually maps very well onto the entorhinal uh, hipp hippocampal attractor system in the brain, which I haven't talked about. But if you want to chat more about it, you can come to the poster session today. Um, so in, in summary, mesh has uh, this memory scaffold, which has an exponentially num large number of predefined fixed states. And arbitrary patterns can be stored in mesh through heteroassociation uh, by tagging on uh, to these fixed points. And lastly, mesh can be used uh, for, uh, as a memory device, but also for, for familiarity detection or locality sensitive hashing, and also as a key value memory in any of uh, the state of the art AI architectures. Uh, that's all uh, today. And if you would like to chat more, then you can come to my booster session. And we, uh, Sarthak and I will be there at 6.30.